Hi, my name is Sharda Agarwal. I'm a functional nutrition therapy practitioner and co-founder of Sepalika. That's an online clinic that helps people reverse chronic health conditions. Emotional eating is not an easy topic to discuss simply because um, the answers are often not obvious to us. It forces each of us to examine our feelings and ask ourselves, why is this happening? In this video, I will attempt to examine some of the reasons why we resort to emotional eating and how we can manage them. Remember, this video is not about passing judgment, feeling bad or sort of beating ourselves. The aim of my video is just to get to a deeper understanding of why we eat when we aren't really or physically hungry. Food is a primary coping mechanism and many of us use food or, or eating as a source of pleasure. It fills a certain void in our life, something that's, you know, that we're missing. Food can comfort us, make us feel happy. And when we eat foods that contain sugars or carbs and fats, they release opioids in the brain. And these opioids make us calm and soothe us, which is why our indulgences are often a piece of chocolate, some mithai or dal chawal. It's rare that we overeat on a salad or a soup. Sometimes we're just not conscious of what we eat. Most of what we call as emotional eating often happens just out of habit. So it's not really emotional in that sense. When we're distracted, like, you know, talking while watching and uh, talking while eating or watching TV or watching, watching a stand up comedy on YouTube, your hand sort of just moves automatically between the plate and the mouth. Or we have a glass in our hand and feel the need to keep sipping the drink. But because or because we have a bowl of peanuts in front of us, we just can't stop popping it into our mouth. Or because we've always eaten two rotis at lunch, we think that's normal. Does the body really, body really need it? Remember, the secret to aging well is to eat as little as possible. But please remember, don't starve. You need to be aware of what your body needs and often it's far less than what we think. Some of us use you know, eating as a distraction from some kind of feelings that are sitting within us that we don't want to face. We may be sad, bored, upset and anxious and in order to avoid those unpleasant feelings, we eat. But just as I said, you know, food is a coping mechanism and the way out of this is to allow yourself to fully experience these feelings. Let the acid rain fall, as my co-founder at Sepalika would say. Now, however terrible that may sound, you'd rather do this than overeat. Eating also happens when we face or experience physical extremes, like when we're too hungry or too tired. And in such time, the brain just succumbs and we're unable to, you know, give in to the urge of craving. The answer here is to get better sleep, give your body some rest and space out your meals better. A lot of us overeat because of poor self-image or because we're uncomfortable in our body. Now, it seems counterintuitive, but when we are overweight, we sometimes feel we've tried everything possible and that there's really nothing that can be done. And in such circumstances, in a helpless situation, we just continue to eat. In these cases, the solution is not easy because we really need to work through therapy, which we find comfortable, comfortable adopting, whether it's you know talking to a friend, a confidant, talking to a counselor, or undertaking some meditative practice that will allow us to look deeper in, you know, within ourselves and address some of those core issues. Stress is one big contributor to emotional eating and when we are stressed, the adrenal glands in the body throughout cortisol and cortisol triggers a craving for salty foods, sweets and fried foods. Why? Because all these foods give us a sudden burst of energy and relief, which is what we're seeking in stressful times. The answer here would be to make that connection. I have often found that in, you know, when I'm, I found myself in such situations and for me, it is to immediately get out of that stressful situation before I reach out for food. If I'm in an office or a public place, this could mean taking five deep belly breaths or stepping out of the room and going for a short walk. And if I'm at home, a nice warm or cool shower really helps. When I step out of my bathroom, I find that my hunger was not real hunger but it was just an emotional need to eat. Now, all these things that I just outlined, whether at home or office, are really things we are doing to change state. And changing state is a fabulous way to release stress. A lot of emotional eating comes from, you know, childhood habits. And because many of us got rewarded, you know, for a good report card with an ice cream, which we then carry into adulthood. A lot of childhood, childhood habits also play into positive spaces like the memory of a grandmother lovingly feeding us that aloo paratha after aloo paratha. And how could we just resist them then and how can we resist it now? So when an aloo paratha is put in front of us, you know, all we're doing is to hark back to our pleasant childhood memory. 
In each of the various instances I spoke where we tend to resort to emotional eating, the solutions are sort of pretty straightforward and simple. Well, almost. First, always be mindful and conscious when you're eating so that you recognize that feeling and stop eating before it becomes an overindulgence. The easiest way to be mindful is to get into a parasympathetic state before starting a meal. Remember how certain communities say grace or thank God for the food that's put in front of them? That's a wonderful way to get into a mindful state. Focus on your food that you're eating and pause between spoonfuls. If you know that there are some underlying, let's say, some emotional issues, it's best that you treat them through practice or a, comf or, or a you know, system that you're comfortable with, whether it's meditation, breath work, talking to someone who can help you out of it. But remember, consistency is key. Thirdly, if emotional heating happens mainly through junk food, the smartest thing to do would be to clear your pantry or your refrigerator so that even when you're tempted to eat, there's really nothing to reach out for. All of us, without exception, have an emo emotional bond with food. I mean, after all, it's human to do so. And food and eating play such a wonderful emotional anchor in our lives. And it is possible to develop a very healthy relationship with food. Thank you for watching. And please put down any questions or comments after this video, and I'll be very happy to answer them.